so hope uh, you are now understand uh, how uh, we convert to s complement let me take uh, another example now uh, for example if you take uh, a number like uh, let's say <coughs> 33 we first convert this into uh, binary 1 2 4 8 16 32 right so there's 1 32 and 1 1 right so the rest will be zero okay now if it is 8 bit register uh 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so we need the uh, two more zeros to fill 8 right so first we fill the register and then what we do is we convert this into ones complement how do you convert into ones complement by inverting uh the bits right So one will be zero, one, 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 zero, one, one. And uh, how do you convert this into uh, two's complement by adding one bit, one to this, the result, right? So one, 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 zero, one, one, right? So this is uh, actually I was converting minus thirty-three. Uh, what we did first is uh, we took the positive value and converted into binary. and then we we went on and so this is the answer for minus 33 <coughs> right and uh, if you were to do this uh, in a quick way which you can use it for checking um we can take this value which is the uh, binary equivalent of 33 positive 33 and what we do is we start from the right corner and comes to the left right Uh, we come from right to left until we find the first one. First one is met here, right here, right. So we write that one as it is, and uh, so until we meet the first one, we come from right to left, and then we write whatever the bits that we have, right. Let's say we had a zero, so we write that zero as well until we find one, and the rest of the bits we start inverting. So this will be one. One, 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 and uh, zero, one, one, and you can see we get the same answer, right? So the technique is uh, we take the positive binary equivalent and we start from the right corner and come towards left until we find the first one, and there we uh, write all the bits up to that one, including that one, and then the rest of the bits we invert. Similarly, we can use this to convert this back to uh, positive thirty-three. Uh, again, what we do is we start from right corner to the left, and uh, when we need the first one, we keep it as it is, and the rest we uh, invert. Okay, right. So, hope you understood that. Uh, let's look at bit overflow. Now, bit overflow, as I told you earlier, um, this is where the answer to an addition or subtraction problem exceeds the magnitude. Which can be represented with the allotted uh, number of bits, right? Now we assign certain bits for the magnitude, no? right? And uh, what happens is uh, uh, there's a there's a carry bit which goes to the next level, next uh, position, and there's no uh, space to store this. Remember that uh, the place of the sign bit is fixed. This happens especially when we use uh, sign and magnitude method. So if you have reserved like four bits for the magnitude. And uh, due to the subtraction or the addition, now it is going to exceed. It's going to have uh, five bits for the magnitude. So there's no fifth bit because we have used the fifth bit as the uh, sign bit. When a positive number is added to a negative number, there will never be a overflow because uh, what you get is zero. Right. Okay. Uh, then I hope you know about the binary uh, shift. And uh, binary shift is uh, basically moving the bits uh, to the left or right so that you can perform multiplication or division, right? Uh, for example, here you can see uh, all the bits are shifted uh, to the left. Right now, it's easy to understand uh, this one because to the left only the positional value increases: one, two, four, eight, sixteen, th uh, thirty-two, sixty-four. To the right, it decreases. So if you move a bit uh, to the left, what's going to happen is a multiplication. If you uh, move a bit uh, to the uh, right, what is going to happen is a division. 
is actually not the bit we move it's the decimal point right uh, the by um, no sorry it's actually the bit we are moving we keep the decimal point as it is and we move the bit okay? uh, so binary uses two unit system therefore uh, shift one place to the left in binary is same as multiplying by two right? so for example if you uh, calculate the denary value for this uh, it is 37 and the denary equivalent for this uh, after bit after shifting one bit to the left it is 74 it's twice as uh, the previous number um, two places it will be uh, <coughs> multiplied by 4 it's 2 to the power 2 so number of places will be the power to the 2 2 to the power shift uh, 3 places it will be 8 multiplied by 8 times So if you move to the right, it will be a dividing division. Um, the right shift of two places is the same as dividing by four. Again, two to the power. So there will be a decimal point there. I mean, a point value. A right shift of three places is the same as divided by eight. Right. So when overflow happens, one of the biggest problems is that uh, it leaves that bit. Now you can see the leftmost uh, one is an overflow number as we only have eight bits and our binary number is now bigger than eight digits. When this happens, CPU drops the overflow digit because the computer cannot store it. So the computer thinks that uh, 255 plus 1 is uh, 0. Right, so here's a look uh, at an example where you do a bit shift to the right. <coughs> you can see that now this is the original number, and this, uh, here's the, um, the period or the dot and uh, this is the fraction part this is the whole number right okay now uh, this represents uh, six because one two four it's six and then uh, i have shifted it uh, one bit so this uh, point will stay as it is this bit will move to this and this one will move to this location and this one will move to this location so that's what has happened so we have one one and then zero and then the two zeros here so now this value is 3. Now you can see 6 is divided by 2. Exactly divided by 2. You have half and you get 3. So shifting 1 bit to the right divides the number by 2. Simple as that. Okay. Right. Now hexadecimal numbers uh, can be used uh, in uh, a computer to shrink uh, data representation to save space uh, in representing data because you need uh, four bits right um, so simply you can take four bits and uh, store this as um, like just one letter like you know uh, this is actually f right so just one is enough right to represent four bits therefore it uh, codes encodes um, the binary data into a larger value uh, therefore we can save space right, so hexadecimal number system is used in uh, in computer systems right so this leads to uh, you know what is called character sets uh, in in computers uh, you know we need to represent uh, letters and numbers uh, then special characters uh, using a particular code right and that code has to be a standard right so this is where we come across uh, two uh, uh, types of uh, codes uh, one is called ascii the other one is called unicode right now ascii uh, is actually used to represent uh, the english alphabet um, numbers and also the special characters 
um, stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So uh, wherever you press uh, A or whatever the letter symbol in a standard ASCII keyboard, uh, QWERTY keyboard, um, it is the same uh, bit stream that is uh, processed by the uh, CPU. Um, so generally, the ASCII uses uh, seven bits, but there can be an extended uh, ASCII code which uses uh, eight bits as well. Um, but seven bits uh, can uh, do the job because uh, two to the power seven you have 128 possible values, which is more than enough uh, to represent uh, um, these characters and uh, special characters in English alphabet. Right? But it is not at all enough. 120 is not at all enough uh, to represent other language characters. Now this is an ASCII character table. You can see uh, that. Uh, uh, the letters, numbers, and even uh, some instructions are represented using ASCII. Now let's look at the next page, and you will see uh, how ASCII uh, code is generated here using the table. If you want to translate "hello" into ASCII, it would look like this, right? Now you can see uh, there's a byte here. Uh, they have used this extended uh, ASCII with an extra bit, which is uh, zero. Um, you can see uh, the first uh, four bits. One uh, triple zero uh, comes from uh, comes from this, right? You can see the cross section for H is here and here, right? So starting from uh, the right most bit, we write this uh, bit string, the the row, and then the column. Uh, or if you start from uh, the right, you start with the column and then the row. So that's why you have got here uh, one double zero and then one triple zero, and then you have filled another zero to make it eight bits. So likewise, we have we can find out uh, hello, right? And also remember uh, that. Uh, letter a capital letter a if you take capital letter a right so we write that uh, okay. right now we can see capital letter is right here it's one double zero one double zero and uh, zero 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 one this is the uh, one two three four five six seven right and this is the ASCII code for letter A, capital letter A. Now you can convert this into DNN, right? How can you convert? This is 1, 2, 4, uh, 8, 16, 32, uh, 64. Right now, what's the answer? Answer is 65. Right, so always remember that capital A is represented using 65 in DNRI. DNRI. Now you know uh, capital B should be. 66 capital C should be 67 so now without the character code the character table uh, you must be able to find out uh, this conversion go, th uh, go through this conversion right uh, so always remember that uh, 65 is representing um, capital A right? Right now, when it comes to other languages, uh, there are so many uh, uh, characters and accents. Uh, therefore, we cannot really have ASCII. 120 is not enough, so we go for what is called Unicode. Uh, Unicode uh, is uh, uh, designed for two bytes, 16 uh, bits. Therefore, it's going to have two to the power 16 variations. Uh, you can imagine uh, the number of variations that we can have. So, it is going to support almost all the languages in the world. But if you want, you can even go for a Unicode that stores 32 bits and uh, have even uh, more uh, characters and accents separately. Right? right now, uh, what has happened here is uh, they have given it in uh, hexadecimal. Now we look at the images. 
uh, now you know <coughs> basically there are two types of images bitmaps and uh, vector images and bitmap images are basically based on uh, the pixels right that they are made of and uh, pixel is actually coming from picture element number of pixels the bitmap is made of is called the resolution number of pixels or dots uh, although they are dots they are square shape and uh, pixels per inch ppi is also used for the resolution and uh, ppi um, is dependent on the number of pixels in width and height right so uh, uh, when the pixel which, which is called the pixel dimension when the pixel dimension is high uh, the ppi also increases right right so uh, <coughs> this height and width is the pixel dimension which is depend uh, which affects the ppi pixel range which is the resolution right and uh, i think you have uh, learned about aspect ratio for ict as well when we discuss about the images now aspect ratio is actually the proportion between the uh, width and the height of an image right mm, aspect ratio so remember it's the proportion to the width and height of an image the larger the number of pixels making up the computer's display to give uh, you some idea yeah. so nowadays you know we uh, go for 1024 1366768 uh, uh, we have higher resolutions uh, 1920 1080 mm, and if you multiply these two values we can find out how many pixels are there in this uh, image on the screen Right. When you take uh, black and white images, you know uh, there's only one. Uh, I mean, I mean two states, either black or white. So that's why uh, black and white images are displayed using uh, matrix like this. You can see zero means uh, there's no color. I mean, uh, it's black, and uh, one is uh, white, or it can be uh, another single color. Right, then there's a concept called color depth. Color depth is actually uh, the number of uh, uh, bits used to represent a single color. Right, you know, uh, in the previous one here in the black and white, uh, we can use only one bit uh, to represent a, uh, represent the black and white here because one bit can have two variations, either one or zero. So if it is zero, it is uh, black. If it is one, it is white. Right. But uh, so that's a uh, that's one bit, one bit color you can say right. Although there's no color. Uh, <coughs> so color bit, uh, color depth is the number of bits used to represent a color. Right. Uh, bit depth is it's also called bit depth. Refers to the number of bits used to um, represent each uh, pixel or dot. They are in each pixel or dot in the sense each pixel will represent one color at a time. So although it says uh, each pixel, it is actually representing a color at a given time. One color at a given time. The more bits, more colors that can be represented. So uh, if it is uh, 4 bits, uh, you can have 2 to the power of 4. If it is uh, 16 bit or 8 bit, uh, 2 to the power 8, 2 to the power 16, right? So you can see that uh, when the number of bits increase, uh, the number of colors that you can represent also increases. When number of colors increase, uh, uh, your picture will be much more realistic uh, we can be closer to uh, the reality right right uh, so um, if you uh, so that's color depth right mm, okay resolution you know resolution and right now if you want to uh, find out the for examination you will need to understand how bitmap images are represented in binary pixels resolution and color depth if you want to calculate the size of an image you need to use uh, color depth and the number of pixels in your calculation so what we do is we simply take the number of bits uh, in width uh, number of bits in height uh, when you multiply those two you will get the number of pixels and then you can find out to represent uh, each pixel how many uh, bits are used that is the color depth 
and if you multiply uh, this number of pixels with the color depth you get total number of bits that we need to represent that uh, picture uh, or the screen at a given time if it is screen because at a given time the screen will display only one color in a pixel single pixel picture of course uh, color is fixed there so if you want to find uh, the file size of uh, of an uh, of a bitmap image all you got to do is just find out how many bits are there for width how many bits are there for height multiply them then you get the total number of uh, uh, pixels in that and then you need to have the color depth because color depth is the number of uh, bits used to represent uh, a pixel or a single color then multiply with that and uh, then you get the total number of bits and if you want to convert that into bytes you can simply divide by 8 and then 1024 so on that if you want to convert it to higher values so one bit color is also called mono color we also have 8 bit color uh, for example uh, gif images they use uh, 8 bit color these jpeg images they use 16 bit 24 32 bit right to work out how many colors that is simply calculate 2 to the power that number right? uh, so you have 8 bit uh, gray colors uh, that is uh, gray scale gray scale you know with uh, between white and uh, black we can have a lot of variations in gray scales uh, that uses uh, 8 bit then 24 bit uh, color which uses 3 bytes um, which can uh, represent 16 million colors almost 16 million colors then 8 bit index color uh, economical way of storing color bitmap uh, without using 3 bytes per pixel uh, number of colors will be less but uh, still uh, you can represent you know uh, images that use fewer number of colors and especially like logos and stuff right if there are fewer than 256 colors uh, bitmap uh, be the same quality as 24 bitmap but will be stored with uh, one third of the data right that is if there are only less than 256 colors we don't really need to have 24 bits because that will waste uh, the memory space that's what it says but if you have more than 20, 256 colors and then of course we need to go for more bits simple as that this is same as the 24 bit color but with an extra 8 bit map uh, known as the alpha channel this uh, can be used to create masked areas or represent tra transparency uh, so 32 bit rgb and even png uh, format can use uh, i think you have seen this uh, alpha channel or the alpha value or the transparency value so we can have background transparent in this method right so calculating image size now you know how to calculate it uh, simply take the number of pixels uh, mm, number of pixels how do you get that you multiply the number of pixels in width and height and then um, you calculate the uh, you multiply it by the color depth or the bit depth and then you divide by 8 and then you go on dividing by 1024 it should be 1024 uh, the standard method to calculate it to kilobytes and megabytes and so on right like this example here right when it comes to sound you know uh, normally the sound is in uh, two forms uh, analog and digital analog uh, signal would be something like this which has varying values according to the time um, it has infinity amount of values 1, 1.1, 1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.9 like that, 1.9 like that. Mm, for the examiners you will need to understand how sound and analog signal is represented in binary and uh, what happens is the analog sound wave is uh, mapped to the digital sound wave right let's see how that is done uh, in analog recordings the machine is uh, constantly recording any sound or noise that is coming through the microphone in digital recording so microphone uh, detects the analog sound this has to be converted into digital sound uh, to feed into the computer um, you have series of samples or snapshots which are a measure of amplitude at a given point in time and are taken uh, from the sound being recorded so what happens is in digital recording um, this waveform is mapped 
using uh, what is called samples or snapshots and then it takes them amplitude amplitude is the height of the wave right uh, and uh, then um, given point in time and taken from the sound being record and this amplitude is represented using a digital uh, data ones and zeros lower sample rate takes fewer snapshots in the waveform so you can see that uh, the, the, uh, this will be one sample let me show you if you take this this is one sample this is another sample this is another sample right? so there's a gap between the samples what happens is this data in between the gaps will be uh, cut off so the outcome will be not that smooth right but if you have more samples more samples uh, quality will be better now there's something called sample rate sample rate is how many samples you take per second per second how many samples you take so if the sample rate is high always uh, the quality of the output digital sound is going to be high okay so you look at this one resulting in a rough creation recreation of the waveform and this one is smoother because we have taken uh, close samples okay so this is called sample rate that is how many samples we take in a second number of times the sound is sampled per second it is measured in hertz 100 hertz is 100 samples per second because hertz is one uh, one uh, second per second hertz is one sample per second so 100 hertz means 100 samples per second so higher the sample rate better the quality of the output digital sound sample rates are measured in hertz but we can also go for kilohertz megahertz and so on uh, the sample rates that you choose depends on what audio is going to be used for for example if you take uh, cd uh, digital sound it has 44.1 kilohertz uh, generally uh, sample rate right uh, the other important factor of determining audio quality is the sample resolution right now these samples have to be stored in the storage right i mean the memory and when you are storing in the memory you have to use a uh, certain amount of uh, capacity which is uh, ultimately measured in bits just like uh, the color depth so this is quite uh, related to the color depth just like the color depth this is the number of bits that you are going to use for a sample this refers to how many different values the sample can take higher the sample resolution more accurate the representation of the level of each sample but higher the sample resolution more memory is required true right so if you are going to use so many bits to represent a single sample it's going to be of much more quality because uh, it's going to have more data right more bits means more data but more storage as well right so remember here you are looking at uh, two important factors uh, of uh, sound quality one is called the sample uh, one important thing is the sample now sample is a snapshot of the waveform that you take that you take to convert into digital right and uh, they are like these points amplitude uh, points actually you take the amplitude of the waveform how many samples you take per second is the sample rate which is measured in hertz and kilohertz and so on and the higher the sample rate better the quality of the sound output and sample resolution is the number of bits that you use to store each sample uh, higher the number of bits uh, more data can be stored about a sample which means uh, more storage as well as uh, higher quality so if you are looking for a better quality sound output digital sound output you need to go for a higher sample rate and a higher sample resolution as well so how sample resolution is measured in bits number of bits i think you have heard about this right um, some kilohertz value for a sound as well as a 32 bit sound 64 bit sound something like that right digital audio is normally found in uh, one of two resolutions 8 bit and 16 bit Uh, we can calculate the sound file size based on the sampling rate and the sample resolution using the following formula now uh, just like the image uh, size uh, you take the sampling uh, rate sampling rate 
that is how many samples are taken per second uh, and the resolution that is uh, how many bits are used for a sample and this is the number of samples per second uh, this is the number of bits used to store each sample which means if you multiply these two only you get the file size per second right but you know audio uh, uh, played audio files are played uh, for a certain amount of time right uh, so if you multiply this value by this is per second if you multiply this by number of seconds that the audio was played then you get the uh, file size the total file size because the audio files that we store in the computer uh, they are set for a certain time period right three minute uh, mp3 uh, sound or uh, half an hour wave file right so that's how you do it right so you uh, multiply the sampling rate by the sampling resolution and the number of seconds okay. right now bit rate bit rate uh, comes uh, when we play back this is related to playback uh, right the previous one was about recording sound and converting into digital right um, digital music files are measured by the amount of information that the that the player can play per second this is playing per second it is usually measured using kbps kilobits per second or kilobits per second kbps or kilobits per second this is the amount of information sound information so bitrate is the amount of information sound information played back in the computer per second every second the bit rate is the number of bits per second sound files played over the internet radio are 56 kbps now you can see that bit rate is going to affect the uh, uh, audio when it is transferred through internet because it's based on the bandwidth uh, so we have 56 uh, uh, 64 kbps kilobits per second the standard uh, for near cd quality is 120 kbps i think uh, in sound files you must have seen this and some files go up to 320 kbps uh, very high quality if we have a 30 second audio file sampled at uh, a rate of 44 kilohertz and quantized using 8 bits we can calculate the size by um, bits per sample samples per second number of channels Right now, uh, this is an addition for this one. Right. Yeah, this is an addition to the previous one because the uh, previous one we had to assume that it comes from a single channel. Now you know that uh, if it is single channel we call it mono but uh, now we have uh, stereo and surround systems and so on in stereo uh, we um, we take two channels left and right so a stereo uh, recording has two channels uh, so the bitrate for uh, bitrate for a recording with 8-bit uh, depth is now this is, this is actually calculating the uh, bitrate right the amount of uh, bits played at a second played at a second it should uh, come as kbps or mbps a stereo recording has two channels so the bitrate for recording uh, with 8-bit depth is uh, so sampling rate is 44.1 so when you convert that into hertz uh, it's 44100 uh, hertz and uh, each uh, each sample uh, will have 8 bits of information right and now this will be played back right this will be played back in two channels in two speakers you are going to have uh, get the same uh, uh, amount of uh, data so now we have multiplied by 2 so this is a uh, kind of different from this one uh, this is uh, calculating the file size but quite similar uh, what comes off uh, what comes from this is the size okay uh, see here the channels are not really uh, needed uh, because we are just recording the sound right 
well channels will be important like if you are recording from different uh, sources but assuming that it comes from uh, only one source uh, we can take this we, we don't need to multiply by the number of channels but here what happens is the same sound is uh, played back uh, as left and right in uh, two channels at the same time so you have to multiply by two you have to multiply by two and uh, you get uh, this amount of kbps kilobits per second So what they have done is actually what, what comes out of is uh, should be bits per second because we have calculated this in bits and uh, now the thing is like if this comes out of uh, two channels and if you play the uh, sound for, for 30 30 30 second uh, then we have to multiply by the duration as well so compared to the previous one the only addition is the number of channels so bits per sample samples per uh, second and uh, uh, number of channels and the duration you have multiplied by the duration as well and the duration should be in seconds because this answer is per second so you multiply by seconds and then uh, the answer is in bits per second and you divide by 8 to get it in bytes per second and then you can go on dividing by 1024 to get uh, kilobits per second okay let's talk about uh, bit of arrays uh, well in the next next video we'll talk about arrays